Hey everyone, I'm here with trainer Grant Setnicker who just won Horse of the Year at last night's 2016 World Finals just by one point too. Congratulations to you, Grant. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was. It can It couldn't have come down more to the wire. That's for sure. Yeah, you would have had a lot of people. Um, you know sitting there biting their nails wondering what was going on and on top of that you had to wait 50 minutes to see what was happening there was a review how were you feeling at that point well yeah there was there was a, a review on my run um and it you know usually they they take you know 10 15 minutes this one took 50 minutes which is great because i just looked at it as they were just really wanted to make sure you know because it was a pretty important review um it was on my first first cow my first quit um, cow turned away and then kind of turned right back into me so they just wanted to make sure I didn't didn't uh, hot quit and um, fortunately um, we we ended up uh, getting some points back and those points gave me enough uh, placings to be horse of the year by one point so it was it was unbelievable it's probably the closest race ever I, it has to be. It can't get any closer. The only way it could have gotten closer is if we tied, you know. And um, and then I guess the rule is after that um, it goes off money won, whatever horse won the most money that year. But um, hats off to uh, Matt Miller and Amanda CD, awesome horse. Um, Chris Brengard, who owns the horse, um, they just it's been it's been a lot of fun this year, um, going back and forth and. I consider Matt a great friend and unbelievable competitor, and uh, it was it was a long year, but it was it was a lot of fun. Well, he had a different strategy to you because he really um, did really well at the big aged events. Uh, you did more of the hauling, um, paid out in your favor in the end. But yeah. what made you decide to go and haul this year? Um, what made what made us what where we ended up at this point was because of points um the mercurius give away points that go towards horse of the year so um if i'm going to go for horse of the year i'm going to try to enter everything possible um and luckily we we did well at a few mercurius i think we made three mercuria finals um won one of them second at one and then placed in the other one and that that put me up high enough in the world standings to make the world finals and then um <clears throat> coming into it i had um it was it was pretty it was it was a tough chore um i had i want to say 64 points to get and uh that's that's how far ahead of me he was and each go around gives away 20 points and then the average gives away 20 points and so i ended up uh, went in second in the average and won two of the four go arounds, and so that gave me enough points to to advance. And um, those those group of horses, I mean, if you look down through them, they're just unbelievable. And um, I couldn't be more proud of my horse, being as young as she is, um, kind of hanging with the big dogs, so to speak. So tell us about Issues My Choice, owned by J5. Um, as you say, a four-year-old, um, more unusual for a horse of that age to win Horse of the Year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she's she's four years old, but she's. I always tell people I want to ride a horse way smarter than me, and I think she is. She's she's she listens to me all the way up until the point where I'm wrong, and that's that's what I will look for in a horse. And um, she's she's gritty. She's strong. She's um, extremely cow smart. And um, throughout the year, to just to to make the world finals, um, she had to. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of like what I describe to people that do aged events. It's like when you make the finals and you try to win a cutting. It's like that every time you show in the in the weekend stuff. And so, um, not only physical strength, but the mental pressure. You know, she and she handled everything well. And um, I just the Yagis, Dan, Yagi family, Chubby Turner, they um, gave me everything I needed to to make all this possible and they're just unbelievable clients and friends and I'm just ecstatic for everybody. So is it more unusual to go hauling for that title with a four-year-old because you really want to dedicate them to the aged events? Uh, what is the what is the trick or the balance I guess to having them not 
um, go lame or you know handle the stress of all that showing. Yeah, I think it's I think it I think it boils down to to their brain as far as um, if they're mentally tough and can and can do it. Then you know I, I look at all those older um, weekend type horses, and I I just can't believe how um, incredibly strong and pure and 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 to, to, to go that hard that long was um, it's tough on a horse and I think you know the reason I mean the whole base model is you do aged events and tell the horses the end of their six year old year and then if you want to keep going you can do some mercurious stuff and 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 some weekend stuff but um i'll tell you what it it, it was it was a a speed that i that i had to learn to get comfortable with and um it was just uh an unbelievable learning experience for both of us and i think the reason people don't do more of it on their younger horses is because they're trying to kind of save them you know for for the next three or four years of their age event career now that you've proven that you can do it do you think you might see some more younger horses go for this title i do i do i i think that um you know <clears throat> the she i think she's the only four-year-old that's ever made the top 15 and um it i don't know it, it's just if it wasn't for the weekend stuff i wouldn't have gotten this title so um yeah, I think I think you might see more of it. How about you? Are you gonna do some more hauling, or are you gonna go back exclusively to the aged events? <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere <laughs> after this year. Um, I feel like uh, I, like uh, I feel like I've been working for a carnival or something. I've just haven't been home a whole lot, and um, but it's been it's been that it, it's been so worth it now, you know. And um, it uh, a lot of you know ten o'clock at night watching cows. Uh, you know, at these weekend shows, and and uh, I'm just I'm just glad all that, and, and it, it, for the horse, I'm glad all her hard work, you know, kind of paid off. So, what does this do for the horse now, the horse itself, in terms of um, value, plans to breed, that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I think it does nothing but increase her value. Um, you know, like win, lose, or draw. Uh, my my mentality was, people know she's a nice horse, and. You know, it, uh, but having that title doesn't hurt anything, in my opinion. Yeah, and she's won. She had won what two hundred eighty thousand before winning the title. Yeah, I think I think um, she's over three hundred. I know she's over three hundred thousand now for sure after the World Finals and stuff. So that was that was kind of neat. And um, you know, she's healthy. She she feels good, and um, I'm sure she's looking forward to a little break. And then we'll do the do the age event stuff next year, and and. Uh, keep keep going so with you hitting the road a little bit more than you do normally uh did you learn something more about yourself or showing or how, how has it you know changed or affected you um what i what i learned hauling so to speak which by the way I, those hats off to um you know some of those guys went to 70 80 shows this year like um i didn't go that hard at all but um I learned even more like I feel like um my program's pretty simple but what I learned is all even more all the little stuff that you feel that we get picky about um just don't even worry about it you know because um when you're going that fast all the time um you're gonna have some little imperfections but um you're just presenting the best run you can out of you know 10 15 phenomenal horses so it, it just for me it was you know i had to learn more speed and more working time is basically what i got out of it and if you had a little miss or anything like that it's not a big deal just keep going and that's that's kind of what i got out of it and how about uh dealing with pressure it was uh, coming into the event last night i was um uh it it wasn't just last night it's it's been kind of all year um because those points are so valuable, and so I, f I, f I felt like once Matt and I were kind of neck and neck, um, I mean, he's he is freaking not going to make a mistake. And so he always, like, you, you, can never, you can never count him out, and so I would always have to try to be perfect as well. And um, it was last night I was, I was really, really nervous. Um, 
I mean, I get nervous every time I show that horse. Um, I think you, you get nervous when you realize the only variable that can mess things up is you. And, um, but that's the kind of horse I want to show as well. So it, it was, it was nerve wracking. And then, you know, I was, it was really hard to figure out the points and all that because you couldn't figure out the average until the, the show was over. And it was just kind of a, but I just, you know, my theory was it'll be what it'll be. I did all I could do. I mean, I cut the best cows I thought were in there and um it was kind of out of my hands at that point and and that's kind of the way I, I try to use all those nerves and all that um to focus versus um letting them uh distract me now Matt wasn't in the final last night but was he watching um I don't I don't think Matt was there I know <coughs> excuse me I know Chris um his owner was there and um we're all kind of waiting around for the review and stuff, but I, I don't think Matt was there. But I, I'm sure he was watching it, or he knows he's he knows everything down to the down to the point and stuff. And so I'm sure he was watching. Well, it certainly makes cutting exciting. Congratulations to you, Grant. Thank you very much. Too.